Hello, and welcome to the 3D A1000 dimensioning system. You connect to the 3D A1000 by typing the IP address of the unit into your web browser. No custom software is required. You are then taken to the welcome page, where you will notice helpful hints displayed on the screen. I'd first like to point out the two icons in the upper right-hand section of the screen. The gear icon is used to access system activities like rebooting your device. The question mark icon is where you access the help menu, tutorial videos, and documents, as well as turn the helpful hints overlay back on. The welcome page is the start of a guided five-step deployment process. On the get started page, first you choose your language and measurement units, then press next. The first step is the application details. This is where you input the parameters of your application. As you hover over the different inputs on the screen, visual feedback helps you understand the field requirements. Under conveyor information, you specify the conveyor belt width, minimum gap, max line speed, and trigger type. Under the object information, you specify min and max object dimensions. You will notice that warnings will pop up if parameters are entered that are outside of the capabilities. This information is used to calculate key mounting parameters. Next we have the baseline. Live feedback assists you while mounting the 3D A1000. Once you are within the specified working distance and angle, press the Teach Conveyor Position button. You will now input the line setup information. This is where you specify the camera orientation, conveyor direction, and trigger position. The trigger alignment visually shows you where to mount an external trigger sensor. As shown in the display, move your package towards the red trigger zone. Once the package is in the correct position, you can move the photo eye so that it is positioned at the triggering edge of the package. The measurement area allows you to confirm the measurement region is aligned with the conveyor. If you have something like a guardrail that extends into the measurement area, this step will allow you to make adjustments to accommodate the setup. We then move on to optimize. The auto-tune button acts as a vision engineer. The 3D A1000 learns variability in your production and selects the best settings for your application. Last, we have the communications page. This is where you specify the data to report and how to format the data. Simple checkboxes turn on powerful features. You can set dimensional limits by specifying the min and max for length, width, and height. This can be used to flag if a box is under or oversized. Feature limits allow you to send an output if the confidence or categorization score is below a specified threshold. The Features button is where you select what additional information you would like about the measured item. You can output the confidence score, categorization score, item count, item position, and item spacing. Under Formatting Options, there is an easy string builder along with advanced options like JSON formatted data. Page 2 is where you will find all of the communications information. Here you can set up the TCP server and client, configure Dataman Multi-Reader Sync, which allows you to send results to a Dataman master camera. This is also where you configure your industrial protocol communications. You can set up your discrete inputs and outputs, and you can also set up the output delays. In the lower right-hand section, there is a Test Outputs button to generate sample data and ensure it is correct. Once you press the Finish button, you have finished the setup and are taken to the runtime screen. Initially, the system is online, which would be looking for a trigger from a PLC or external sensor. If you take the system offline, you can trigger it manually in the software. Here you can view the 3D image, as well as the 2D image. The icons in the upper left-hand corner allow you to toggle through different views, as well as turn on and off the 2D image. The data string is shown in the results history, and the current results are on the bottom of the screen. 
The tabs in the middle show the dimensions as well as the advanced features like categorization, confidence, and item location. There is also a customer acceptance test or CAT tab. Here you can collect information, report statistics, and view charts. To start a customer acceptance test, press the start button. Next, you enter the nominal dimensions for the test. Here I will apply the most recent measurements. As you trigger the 3DA1000, dimensional data is collected and the statistics tab is populated. A chart is viewable as well. Once finished with the test, press the stop button and you can view a customer acceptance test report. If at any time you should need additional help, there's a help menu located under the question mark icon. Here you can find additional video tutorials as well as supplemental documents. Thank you.